you, you got to remember that you can still be the millionaire, even if the million dollars isn't in your bank account. Because this is so true, is that the seed is still the forest. Who's with me? The seed is actually the forest. It just hasn't come to be yet. And one of the hardest things about being a human being compared to being a, you know, a tree, I would imagine, not that I've remembered being a tree yet, is that uh, when you plant a seed, it is that it is going to turn into that tree. It knows what seed it is. And so you can plant a carrot seed. You can, you can plant any other kind of seed, strawberry seed, and it's going to grow into the right tree. Does that make sense? I think what's interesting about us is we look at that seed and you can break that seed up. You can hit it with a hammer. You can look at it. There's, if you didn't know anything about what a seed was, it, you wouldn't know you wouldn't know that that has infinite potential to create a forest. Who agrees that that's magic, by the way? Like that's complete magic, that that seed, you look at it, this tiny little thing, it has all the potential to create a whole forest of a certain kind of, uh, a certain kind of tree or a certain kind of fruit or plant. And that's absolutely magic to me. Uh, I love, I love that. But the truth is, that's what we are as well. We're magic. I mean, if you've ever, you know, if you're a parent and you've got children, you know the magic of what we are. The magic is everywhere. The hard thing that humans do, though, is that what, what, we, what we try to, to do is we, we're planting the wrong seed, expecting a different thing to grow. Who's with me? So we're planting a seed of scarcity or anxiety or doubt and we're thinking by putting that out and by being that, we're suddenly going to turn into this abundant, freedom, loving, you know, completely fulfilled person who's with me. It's completely impossible. So the truth is this, is that seed is also the forest. Who's with me? The seed is also the forest. It is. It's just that that time hasn't moved for us to see it, but it already is it. Type in yes if you agree, the seed is the forest. Yeah. Hey, Deb. Hey, Julie. Hey, Peter. Good, good, good. Because that's saying that's true for you as well. Hey, Mary. So you just jumped on. See, a lot of people say to me, but Chris, you know, uh, how can I be grateful for the millions with the millions isn't in my bank account? Well, that's because you're looking at the end result instead of realizing you've got to first be the seed. You've got to first be what it is that's being created. You see? And so anytime that you're out of that, you're actually putting the wrong thing out. You're being in the wrong place. So I wanted to talk to you to start off today, a very important topic, one that people miss a lot. And it's actually the reason why the law of attraction doesn't work for a lot of people. So it's going to be a very good session. And that is, I want to be very clear, the difference between problem solving and creating the difference between problem solving and creating. Just think about that. What is the difference between problem solving and creating? Now, there's a lot actually. In fact, they are completely different worlds. But a lot of people think that they're the same thing. In fact, like problem solving, I'm a problem solver is, is sort of like a, you know, it's like a badge of honor nearly, like they'll solve problems, right? Yes, it does. It says spiritual gangster. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and, and so problem problem solving yeah that's what a lot of people peter says it's different sides of the cause and effect equation in fact problem solving screws a lot of people up and i'm going to explain why whenever you create when it, whenever you try to manifest out of problem solving you are going to find yourself in a lot a, a lot of challenge you, you're not going to be able to create what you want let me explain this if you, the only reason that you move forward is because there's something that you don't want to have. As soon as you move away from that, let's call it a problem, you'll lose all the motivation. So let me explain. You don't have the body you want. You go, ah, that ain't the body I want. What a problem. So you go, you know what? Because of that problem, I'm going to act. I'm going to go to the gym. So you go to the gym and guess what happens? You move a little bit away from the problem. So what happens is, is now the problem isn't so potent. I want you to think of the problem like a fire. You're a little bit away from it. And so then, oh, the problem's not there. So what happens to your motivation? Does it stay there? Yes or no? No. What happens? It goes back. 
And then you end up with the problem again. Oh, wow, the problem's there again. Shoot. Well, I better do something about it. So you do it, you move away from it. And then the problem's not there anymore. Now, a lot of people, they stay in a problem-solving mentality their whole life. But I'll tell you the truth. Someone who was broke growing up, and that's the problem. Yeah, I'm about to explain. So somebody, what they do is the problem. So Sarah says, maybe I'm the exception to prove the rule. It's just not true. Because the problem has to exist for the motivation to be there. What's the real problem? I'm not good enough if my body's not right. The problem is I'm not good enough if my body's not right. That problem has to always stay with this person. So they never actually get to enjoy their body because they're always stressed. They're always stressed. I'm not good enough unless it's right. So they never actually create and have what they want. Now, it might look like they do on the outside, but on the inside, there's this stress. Type in a yes if you're hearing me, Sarah right? It has to exist. It has to be right there in order for it to go. Does it make sense here? Like the problem, and I know, you know, Sarah's on this call, by the way, and I think she's 16 times world amateur um, bodybuilding champion, right? I know you have the best body. It's proven. You've got it all. And so what happens is that if someone comes from a problem-solving dynamic, the problem always has to be there. It has to be something in their mind that is not acceptable, okay? And so you might be able to get results, right? And a lot of people do, but there's a better way. There's a better way because here's the truth. Write this down, type it in. If you're in a problem-solving mentality, the problem has to exist for the result to exist. The problem has to exist. And by exist, it at least has to exist in your mind as something that is unacceptable. Who's getting this? Type in a yes if you get this. It has to exist at least in your mind. So think about somebody who was broke growing up. They say, I can never be broke. I can't be broke. It's painful. So they start creating an action and a vision. And their vision is just don't be broke. Make lots of money. So they make lots of money. But guess what? They save. They don't spend much, right? They do all these things and not be broke. So is the broke really gone, right? Is the brokenness really gone? Is it always there? Mary Wright writes in, isn't it a good thing because it motivates to solve it and find another one to solve? All you'll do is collect problems that are hovering behind you that say, don't you dare slip up. Don't you slip up because that problem's right there. Who's with this? The problem is right there. Don't do anything wrong because you can't have the problem. What it creates is people never going for what they want. In a problem-solving mentality, people don't go for their dreams. What they do is they go for just not having the problem. They don't go for what they want. They just go for not having the problem. And that's the problem, Mary, is if they're, they're stuck in the problem-solution mentality, they never actually get what their dream is they just don't ever have the problem. And so they have an okay body. They have an okay job. They have an okay life. They have an okay all sorts of things. Who's getting this? But they never actually go and go for what they want and go big. Does this make sense? Nothing. When you see people who've gone big, no one who's created something big is able to keep it or create it out of the problem-solving mentality. And I know that, could you give us a problem solving statement and a creative statement? Absolutely, Stuart, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the creative um, part of this in just a second. But the key thing here is we have been told that we've got problems that we need to solve. And the truth is, is this keeps the problem alive. It stops us from actually planting the true seed to manifest what we want because the seed we're always planting is right now isn't good enough right now isn't good enough here's not good enough i've got to get somewhere else here's not good enough and if you were to ask me what the matrix really is this is what i'd say it is if that they have told us that the natural world isn't good enough for us and we have to add all this other shit to it you have to have a job and a house and a this and a, you have to have all this you know there's that old saying right you you know you go and you you get the you get the, the nice house, so then you need a security system. And then you've had the nice house and security system. Well, now you've got a driveway, so now you need the car. 
And, you know, now you've got a car, so now you need insurance for that. And, you know, now you've got this house, you need to have couches and you need to have a TV. And then because you've got all this, well, now you need a second job. And so now you've got a second job. Well, now you need a babysitter. And so now you've got a bit, you know, and it's like, you, you know, you just, you just keep on going. You just keep going. And so right, really own this, okay? And I'm, I'm going to talk to you uh, about the opposite because problem solving keeps the problem alive because it is the opposite part of the vibration. See, abundance isn't the opposite to scarcity. <laughs> They're not opposites. You can just choose abundance, you see? Being rich isn't the opposite to being broke. It's just being rich. They're not opposites. However, a lot of people in the, the mask of going for being rich and abundant, that's what they say they're going for, but what they're actually going for is just not to be broke or not to have any status. So what, what's the difference about creating? Well, when you create something, it's for no other reason than you just love to see it exist. No other reason, you just love to see that exist. Here's how you know you're in problem solving. I'm going to do this, which will solve this problem so then I can do something else. A true creator just goes for what they want. They say, I would just love to have a, an amazing business. I would just love that. But that's what I'm going for. I'm not going for it so that I can feel whole. I'm not going for it to be rich. I'm not going for it for any way that I feel incomplete. I'm just creating that just because I would love to see it exist. They're completely different worlds. One world, all actions are derived from there's something wrong, so I have to do something. New world is everything's fine. Everything's fine. I could stay right here. I could just, this could be it. But I would really love to see that exist. So that's what I'm going to create. Is a difference really between somebody who's a painter and they see a blank canvas and they say, you know what? That blank canvas is not a problem beautiful blank canvas. But what I would like is I'd like to see that to be this beautiful painting. Does that make sense? They're not solving a problem. Walt Disney didn't go out there to solve a problem. He thought, you know what? I'd like to create amazing movies. You see, it's not because there was this problem that made his life worse off. I'd like to get some feedback. How's this landing with you guys? What are you getting? Makes sense, Kerry? Good. Good. It's a, it's a completely different world, being a creator versus being a problem solver. Yeah. Nice. What else? What else? Type in. Feed it back to me. What are you guys getting from this? What's landing? What's good? What's tough? Makes sense. It is totally different. Yeah. So, Sarah, great. I'm glad I saw your name pop up. Is, is There's a difference between I've got to have a beautiful body because my body I have right now is ugly and crap and I hate it. And so I've got to have this beautiful body. That person will get into that beautiful body and they'll always think they look ugly and crap and hate it. They'll always, versus just going, you know what, what I would love? I'd just love to have a great body. Mine's fine right now, but I'd love it to be like that. That's what I'd love. This one's good, but I want it to be like that. It's such a different, it's, it's when you're here and you're solid now and you're going for something versus going, this is shit. I'm going to put a fire and it gets me going. Problem solving is hugely limiting. Thanks, Stuart. Love it. Love it. It is like chasing your own tail. Yeah. Melissa says, I've been in the problem solving frame of mind since forever. Yeah, most of us are. We're told uh, between the ages of zero and four, we're told the word no 85% of the time. No, don't do that. Problem, problem, problem. Um, yeah, so Mary types in, uh, I understand this to be the, comps, the concept of towards and away from. That's a good way to put it, yet I think it's an incomplete description because I can still be towards something and away from something at the same time. Does that make sense? Like I can be moving towards something and away from something at the same time. What I'm saying here is that I'm not really towards it. It's more like I'm bringing it to me. I want this thing to be created. I want to add, I want this to be made. It's nearly not even towards. The word towards sort of means, so I just wouldn't say it that, but it's, it's close, yeah. Yeah, great, Ed, love it. Makes perfect sense, hits home as you outline it. Yeah, right on, Peter. Fix it, fix it, fix it. And, and let me just ask, how many of you 
have had this experience. When I finish college or university, well, then life will be better. You know, when the kids just get a bit older, then it'll be better. When this, then, you know, like we're waiting. Or oh, there's this problem. So I'm just going to fix the problem. Well, it's, it's her or it's him. I just need to fix this. It's a divorce is what I need. And you get rid of it. Right? And then you're, holy shit, it's still the same. Anyone else had that experience? Because you're in a problem solving. You're seeing a problem. And so you're taking action to try to solve the problem. Right. And so what happens is, is your, the action keeps the problem alive. So you remove something out of it. But then because of your vibration, you pull it back. You pull it back. It is. Sarah says it's how the vast majority. By the way, guys, if you see that you're typing into all panelists, no one else can see it. So if you only want me to see it, type it in that way. But if you, you know, you want to share in the conversation, there's a little box where it says more. And I think you can change it so everyone else can see what you're saying. I have no preference, just so you guys, you guys know. So, so here's the truth. You must have a true goal and true visions for your life. And how you know that true is when you go for them, you're just going for them because you would love to see that exist. But in your heart, in your heart, you're just you're already complete. That's not going to make you more in love with life. It's not going to make you uh, get more love. It's not going to do anything. And that is what is so important is just creating because you want to see it happen. Most of us, and I say this to people a lot of time, most people's goals will never manifest it's like a child playing. Thanks. I've got a couple of my magnetic mind coaches uh, on here. So certified coaches type in a me if that's you. So we've got quite a few of them on tonight. So they were putting in really good comments. Yeah. Is it is like a child playing. It really is, Helen. It's it's like just that creation. It's that joy to see it happen rather than this, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Yeah. Really, 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 really core cool concept because most people's goals are designed in a way to fix something. And that is why they never get them. Well, it's not why. It's one of the main reasons why they'll never have them because they're not just going for what they want. They're not just creating. They're not just having it, you know. And I think I saw Peter had a big epiphany a couple of weeks ago about this is, a lot of times we're taking this long road around just going, you know what I really want is that. And I should just go straight for that. And it's, uh, and it's good just to have that. So I really wanted to make sure that that landed with you guys. And so I want to ask a, a question. And, and the question is, well, how do you do this? How do you shift from problem solving to creating? How do you shift from problem solving to creating? Mm. Mm. It's a good question, isn't it? Who's got any ideas other than my certified coaches? How do you shift from problem solving to creating? Change my way of thinking, Natasha. Change my way of thinking, Stangs. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> yes, Kerry writes, and be grateful for where you are right now. Stop looking for problems. Yeah. That's it. Melissa, accepting and embracing reality, believe what you have is already a blessing. You must, and this is one of the things, is you must get, it's called the wizard's gate. Okay, you can type that in if you like and own it. It's called the wizard's gate. It's this moment when you're in right in the center here, you're in this moment where you have no resistance to the moment and then nothing, nothing, uh, no desires that would make the moment better. You're in the wizard's gate because there's nothing wrong and nothing could be better. Does this make sense? That's, the, that's called the wizard's gate. It's where there's nothing wrong and nothing could be better. Uh, it's been called presence. You know, it's the moment, it's the now. That you must be able to get into that 
You must be able to get into that. And when you're finally in that place, which is some of the things we do while we do the processes and we unplug and we get to that wizard's gate moment right in the middle, and you go, you know what? Everything's freaking perfect. Well, what would I love to see created? Oh, you know what I'd love? I'd love to see created a beautiful house. Awesome. Well, that's great. So what I need to do that. Oh, I'd love to see myself. I would love to be a speaker or I would love to have a business. Oh, I would love just, I would love to see that happen. You see, one of the, my um, fastest growing businesses is a digital marketing certification. We've just ticked over our hundredth client and we only started it in December. It's an $8,000 program. So we've done $800,000 since last December. And Oh, there's a lot of reasons why it's been such of a success. But one of the reasons I believe is I just really, really wanted to see it exist. I was making enough money. I was head free. I just, it didn't even make sense to do it. I just wanted it. I was like, I just want to see that happen. I want to see people getting certified in this. I just want it. Does that make sense, guys? I just wanted it. I just thought that, that I would love to see that happen. And, you know, it wasn't coming from a place of that will make my life better, it will make me more rich. It was nothing else, even though it has done both of those things. It was just this love of wanting to create it. And so the key is, is we must be okay and be completely happy with now. And this is some of the things that, that we really, that I want to talk to you guys about today, is how happy are you with the now? How happy can you be? with the now so how much if you were to rate yourself how much do you think you accept you know the present moment hmm peter says seven christine says eight yeah well i think we should look at it it's good to see you guys typing in by the way how much do you accept the present state? It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. Like really, how much do you think you really accept the present state? Hmm. So I've got some, I've got some questions uh, for you about this. So the first one, and I want you to rate this out of 10. I want you, so 10 will be you fully accept the statement and zero is you fully reject it, okay? So nothing is wrong at all. 10 means you fully accept that and zero means you fully reject it. Nothing is wrong at all. Good job, Helen, love it. Nine out of 10, 9.8. I love the specificity. <laughs> five, awesome. So there's some work to do. 10, five, eight, five, five. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving the 9.8 as well. So close. Couldn't, couldn't quite get the 10. <laughs> Nine. Okay, good. Ready for the next statement? There is something that the present state is better than. There is something that the present state is better than. So there's something else that is worse than now. Cool. Everyone's happy with that one. Getting tens all across the board. Good, 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 good. Okay, you guys ready for some tougher ones? My problems are brilliant solutions. My problems are brilliant solutions. 10, do I fully accept that? Zero, I fully reject. My problems are brilliant solutions. Oh, everyone's happy to say that their problems are solutions. <laughs> Good. All right, they're going to get tougher. 
Um, Peter says he doesn't understand. So every problem that you have, you created to solve something. So someone has a problem with the fear of public speaking. It's actually to solve uh, not wanting to um, be judged by others. Yeah, got it, brother. Oh, absolutely. Sarah says, doesn't that put us back into the problem mindset? This isn't a process. I'm helping you to see how much you're in the problem orientation. This isn't a process at all. This is just me helping you. I'm only in top left stuff here, Sarah. You've been damned for five. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and that bad headache. So someone just said, well, I have a bad headache. So that's, an out that's a brilliant solution to show your body it's, just to, to, it's a warning sign to say you haven't drunk enough water or there's something going on in your head, <laughs> right? It's a warning sign. The headache's not the problem. There's something else. <laughs> so it's an elegant solution. It's a brilliant solution to this person doesn't know there's something wrong. <laughs> All right, you ready for the next one? I can surrender 100% to what is. 100%. I can surrender 10 means you fully, fully accept. Zero means you can you fully reject that. I can surrender a hundred percent to what is. Oh, we got some zeros. Good. There's some work to do. Five, sevens, eights, ones, 9.89. <laughs> surrender means to completely let go, to not try to change, just to completely accept surrender. You, you know, you're not, you're not trying to change it. Can you, so here is, I can surrender a hundred percent to what is. <laughs> so someone said, and I can, but I don't. Easy to say, difficult to do. Yeah, true. All right. Five. Oh, good. Well, it's good to just notice how much you're rejecting the present state, how much you see it as a problem, because it's good. I'm freaking out your control freakness. Good. Well, that's why I'm here, Sarah. You wouldn't want a coach that doesn't do something. It's hard to do that, then not create, which is from exactly Stuart. So we've got to. Well, actually, so Stuart just said, well, it's hard to do that and not to create from, which is sort of problem solving. Well, you can completely surrender to what it is and then go, you know what I would love to see manifest? I would love to see that, even though you've already surrendered to what is. Hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense, brother? And thanks for being so engaged, everybody. I love it. Does it make sense? Good, good, good. Okay, next one. Next one. There is nothing I can do to be more or less loved. 10 out of 10. 10 is totally accept, zero is reject. There is nothing I can do to be more or less loved. Oh, lots of tens for this. Oh, five, a six, a nine. Nothing I can do to be more or less loved. I can't have a better body, can't make more money, can't get more fame, can't help more people. Well, then put a zero. <laughs> Melissa says, I think I could do way more. Well, it, just put that as a rejection then. <laughs> six, seven, there you go. <laughs> So good. We're all a work in progress, including me. That one's a tough one for me. I'm still working on it. <laughs> I, I have weeks where I'm really good with it. And then I have moments where I'm like, I'm going to do this and the world's going to love me more. <laughs> all right. So last one, last one. Right now is better than what I want. Right now is better than what I want. <laughs> zero 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 one two three ah the good one nicole well t you tell me natasha 10 out of 10 means you accept it zero means you reject it zero zero five three five negative six is this one i struggle with six so this is the one i struggle with negative six ed <laughs> just teasing you it's funny it's a six okay cool six five awesome 
a lot of people's egos get worried when they hear someone talking about this sort of stuff because they say, well, if there was no problems, where would my motivation be? It's like, well, well, exactly. Isn't the whole point to do something so that there's no problem? Think about it for a second. I always get someone say to me, but Chris, if I didn't have a problem, then what would I do? And I'd be like, exactly. Isn't that the whole point of creating millions of dollars or everything you want so there are no problems? And then they sit there, they go, oh yeah, I've been fooling myself that I wanna solve problems because I, yeah, fuck, I've kind of made them all up. True? How many of you have been thinking it already? Going, well, what would I do if there wasn't a problem, Chris? What would I do? How would I be motivated if there was no problem? Exactly. 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 So the truth is, is one of the things we're gonna we must always do. Can we live and live with no problems to solve? Of course. Of course, isn't that the goal of doing this? So there isn't a problem to solve. It's a creation. I'll tell you a story. It's not a nice story, but you guys know that right now there are starving children in Africa. See, that problem exists right now. However, when it gets really bad, when it gets really bad, like something really bad happens, they will flood our TVs, radios, newspapers, and they'll say, come and help. So we go, wow, a big problem. What do we do? We send money, we send food, and we go and solve the problem. But did we actually do anything? Instead, what happens is they get a little bit. The problem still exists. It's kind of solved for a little bit. The problem's gone away. But did anything really change? No. So what happens is they go out of our newspapers, our TVs. The problem still exists, but they don't have as much pain anymore. And so it doesn't matter how many times you try to go in and fix it. Sometimes you just need to say, hey, look, we're not going to fix this. We're going to just say, hey, it's all good. Let's create. Let's create what we really want. So instead of just fixing this, we just instead of fixing this, let's create. Let's create something great and brilliant. But without looking at the problem, let's just choose to say what we want. See, when you go to a mechanic sometimes, what do they say? Hey, this car ain't worth fixing. Just throw it out, get a new one. That's what I want to say. Hey, some of these problems aren't worth fixing. Throw them out, guys. Just throw them out. And what do you really want to create? See, hear this. Really, really, really hear this. Hear this. You don't have to have a problem to create. In fact, the problem that you're looking at has absolutely nothing to do with the creation. We've just connected them somehow. We've said, I've got a problem, so I have to go through and do this. And this is so true about when it comes to manifesting, creating a great life. If you want to manifest and create a great life, just go for it rather than having to have a problem to solve. Has everyone got the point on this? Because I think so. I think so. Now, yeah, of course, there's going to be speed bumps along the way in creating. Uh, the truth is, is that you're not going to react. You don't want to react to the problem. You don't want to react to the problem because then you're always bound by the problem. There is a massive difference going in, trying to fix something that's broken and then just saying, what do we really want? So here's my question for you. What is it that you really want to create? What's one thing? And type it in, and we're going to do a process. What's one thing you would love to create just for the love of it? Just for the love of it. Not because it's going to make you any better or worse, but what's just one thing that you just love to create? A great holiday, great. What, what's something you'd love to create? I'd love to just manifest a beautiful car just because I love to drive a beautiful car. I'd love to make, what is something, type it in. What is something you would just love to create? Awesome. Helen says, a house in Australia with a nice veranda and a view. A great garden forest, nice. 
huge rose garden, several hundred hectares, a free for all to visit. Beautiful. Well, that's a problem. I'd love to have to not juggle bills. So what would you like to create? You see, what would you just love to create? You see, isn't it interesting? A first class trip to Croatia with my three parents for three months, with my parents for three months, sorry. Three parents, doesn't make sense. A big house with a studio and a pool. Yeah, I'd love to develop a new healing modality. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, financial freedom isn't isn't a, isn't normally a true creation, because the true creation isn't that. It's what would you want to do with the financial freedom. Someone's typed in a multi-million dollar MLM business. Well, I'll beg to differ. The true, and, and I'll, I'll just put it out there. The true creation is the millions of dollars. Just because you'd love it. But really, it's what would you want to do with it? Do you see? Do you see the difference? Like I can, I can feel the problem solving in some of these, right? And I won't read out. Because you typed it into all panelists, I won't read out who, but a multi-million dollar MLM business, I can feel the problem solving in that. Yeah. It's so, so, so nice to just go, hey, you can just create without, without having a problem. You can go, hey, I'm good and I can create. See, if you want to create a lot of money, but you're only creating a lot of money because you think more people will like you, <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. If you wanna create a lot of money and you think creating a lot of money, you'll get freedom, <laughs> again, another problem. If you wanted to create a lot of money because you think it's gonna allow you to do more things, all of those are irrelevant because you can do the thing. You can just go for what you want. You don't need this excuse to get the money first. It's so important to get. In fact, it's very easy to have freedom. Sometimes I walk past uh, homeless people who have so much freedom living here on the Gold Coast, this beautiful, beautiful time. And then I think about all the people rushing around in their buildings and I go, wow, I wonder who's got the most freedom. <laughs> it's true. What do we got here? I'd love to encourage women. It's okay to be themselves when they're stuck with horrid things. Nice. It sounds like a pure creation. But it also sounds like you might be looking at that there's a problem. I would love to help people improve their health. Yeah, great. That's what I'd love to create. And so I don't know by reading what you've put in here, whether it's a problem solution or if it's just a pure creation. You have to ask yourself, are you doing that to solve a problem or just because it's something that you love? It's a good question, isn't it? Okay, so let me ask you, and, and we'll just go with whatever you've written down there now. How would it feel to have that? How would it feel to have that? Maybe close your eyes and just ask yourself, how would it feel to have that? And if you've written in three or four, just choose one. How would it feel to have that now? How would it feel to have it now? Just how would it feel? You should feel love and joy and just... Just feel freaking awesome. Relaxed, amazing, pure magic. Yeah, it might be helpful, but but the the truth is, I think, is that you're seeing a problem wanting to create it. But what, what do you really want to create? Just an amazing life. Like, what do you really want to create? Just a lot of money. What do I really want to create? I want to I want to create a way to help people. You know, sometimes I think we, we get ourselves, you know, fun. Yeah, I like it. So let, let, let really feel into that. Whatever you wrote down, how would it feel to have that now? Cool, fun. Yeah, good. Let's enjoy. The creative orientation is so different to the problem solving create, creative structure. These two structures, and you guys know I talk about structures, these two structures are completely different. When you're just a creator, just creating it for love, you just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and, going and just keep creating. When you're in the problem solution, 
you're creating it to solve a problem. And so the problem always has to be there for this to exist because they were created together. Nice. All right, let's get back to it. Sorry, I got distracted. How would it feel to have that creation right now? I'll just tune into mine. 50 million people learning this work. I just, I just freaking love this work. By the way, the Magnetic Mind pro program is a complete love creation. And, that, and a lot of you feel that, by the way. I know you do. You go, wow, this just feels so good, so much support. It's such a creation. I wanted to create the best, just the best, just for, for the love of it, for the total love of it. So here's the, here's the next part of this. Here's the next part of this is compared to that, what do you have now? And we always must create the tension. And so whenever, whenever someone's creating, they've always got to look at the progress they've made. So as they're painting the painting, they have to see it. They have to see it happening, see it taking shape, right? So you can have half of it ready, right? You could say, well, half of the painting's ready. I've written half a song. Or you could say, you know what? I'm staring at a blank canvas compared to this. You know, you could say, hey, I'm just the seed right now about to grow this. Or you could say, you know what? I'm growing a forest and I've got some roots. I'm a planted seed, you see? So I want to ask you, just to feel into it, compared to that creation, what have you got now? You know, you, what have you got now? And just type it in. What have you got now? That's okay, Nicole. Nicole said, I'm distracted by problem solving. That's okay. So right now I'm, I'm at ground zero. I'm just working on my, uh, I'm just, I'm just choosing it. Inspiration, vision, goal. And urge to book that flight. Nice. Foundation. A tree nursery about to grow into a massive forest. I'd say so. Nice. Excited, stuck, stressed. Awesome. Good job. Written some stuff. Ebook, exercise book, herbal products. Cool. Cool. And how do you feel about where you're at now? How does it feel now? And, and compared to the creation, I've seen a few people stop typing in. So you have, what do I want to create? How does it feel? And what do I have now? And how do I feel? Just type it in so we can work on this because there's two elements to creation every single time. It's happening, I'm manifesting it. So I'm already painting the painting. Yeah, how do I feel now? How do I, how do I feel about what I have now? Accepting it now, good job, Peter, love it, brother. Feels great, want to have more, awesome. Got one tree going. Nice, good job, Stuart, love it, man. Solid and excited, grateful. Nice, how do you feel about that stuff? Is it really grateful? <laughs> Want to make it happen. So I feel a desire to make it happen. Be true. Be true to yourself. You just got to be true. This is where I am now. That's where I want to be. Awesome. You set that up, right? You just go, cool. This is where I am now. Cool. I'm just the seedling. I'm just this. And that's where I need to be. Awesome. That's where I need to be. That's where I need to be. Hmm. So where are we now? Well, we're at 111 people. We want to get to 50 million. <laughs> How do I feel about that now? I feel freaking stoked. I'm on the call. I'm talking to those people. Feels good. And so I know that I'm the seed of what I'm creating. It's not going to be any different. There'll just be more. Does this make sense? And, I, and the reason why I just went into my own place there for you is you are already it. That's so why I always say you've got to be it before you see it. You've already got to be it. You must be the, the smaller version of it and then letting it unfold and manifest. You see. Does everybody get that? Nice. It makes so much sense. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. This is the way you create anything, absolutely anything that you're committed to. 
anything you're committed to. So let's do a little bit of an unpack around this and then let's, uh, let's do a negative belief flip. So what is, what is, what would someone believe in order to be here in life and not where they want to be? What would someone have to believe that would keep them here and not be there? What is something that someone would have to believe? Type it in. What would someone have to believe? They'd have to believe safe. They have to believe in self-doubt. They'd have to believe it's too hard. Thank you, guys. They have to believe they're not good enough. Yeah, what would someone have to believe to be here and not there? They'd have to believe it's hard. That there is something that is difficult. You don't know enough. Have to believe in fear. Fear of what? Fear of what? Mm. Not believe in themselves. Hmm. Nice. What judgments would someone have to have of that belief? What judgments would someone have to have about that belief? Hmm. Mm. Awesome. So I would like you all, so I'll ask one more question. Um, what inner conflicts do you have about this goal? Obviously part of you wants it, but what about the part, part of you that doesn't want it? What inner conflicts do you have? Hmm. Fair enough. Then I'm just not good enough. Worried about what I have to let go of. Awesome. So I've asked enough questions. I want you all to type in a yes, not yet. Type in a yes when you've chosen one belief. When you've chosen one belief, you would like to flip into a positive. So type in a yes. So if you're ready, uh, go ahead and close your eyes and just settle in. That's it. Oh, good, Stuart. If you have, you have. Just go ahead and just settle in for a moment. Just take a couple big breaths and just uh, choose to get the most out of this exercise. Really, just, just choose it. And as you do that, I want you just to, to bring up in your mind, just bring up in your mind that belief and just feel what it's like to have that, that belief. And just trust yourself. Know that you created it. Just trust yourself and just know that you created it. That's it. And start to grow yourself younger. So grow yourself younger. And what you'll do is just, just allow yourself, you need to imagine this the best you can. You, you might see it work right, or you might just feel it, but just grow yourself younger all the way back. Just grow yourself younger all the way back. That's it. Just continue to grow yourself younger, holding on to this belief holding on to this belief. And as you go back, some of you, it's already happened. You'll feel a click or you'll feel 
you feel like you're there because you will know you're there when you can't feel that belief anymore. You can't feel that feeling or it just doesn't make sense anymore. And just keep, just keep in your mind going younger and younger and younger until it's just not there. That's it. And it's, it's kind of like rewinding a tape and, you know, have you ever remember those old cassettes and you rewind it and all the tape sort of flies out and can never really be played the same again, but you might try by putting your finger in it and turning it around. It's kind of like that. Just, just go all the way back. That's it. And so just go all the way back and, and just go all the way back. Now, you, you might see an event, you might see something, but just go back to just when you were when you were creating this, it might be in the womb, it might be, it might be some random thing, but whatever you see is just perfect back when you were creating this. And what I want you to do is just imagine if you can, just imagine that you can float, float up. That's it. And keep your eyes closed, guys, and just make sure you're doing this. Just float up as you're doing it. You may see something, you may not, but just look down on it. And ask your superconscious to simply notice how many more options are available. Like ask your unconscious, like, what else could I choose to believe? And just let them bubble up, like, I don't know, like bubbles just, just floating up. That's it. Just, just notice that you could choose, instead of I'm not good enough, you could choose I'm good enough. You could choose this has nothing to do with good enough. You could choose that everything's a test you can lose once you can choose that not good enough you can choose doesn't matter to you just think about all the different things you could choose in this situation whether you have words or not just allow those to pop into your brain right now like like popcorn really they're just popping up that's it and and know that you created this and so ask yourself what would you prefer to create what would you prefer to create? What's a choice? What's a decision? What's something you would prefer to create that would be much, much, much better in your future? And you'll get it. Now, usually, usually it's the complete opposite. If you're the creative force in your life, why not just choose to be good enough? Why not just choose to be worthy? Why not? What's stopping you? That's it. And you'll find the one that feels the best. It's like finding, you know, a key that just fits right. It'll just click into place. You go, that's the right one. I should choose that. That's it. So choose it. Good. And if you've chosen it, just choose it and float, float yourself back down into your body. And just imagine that you're kind of trying it on. Like let that new feeling, that new belief, just say it in your head a few times all the way back in time. Just try it on a bit. Notice how it feels like a new jacket. You know, it feels new. It feels good. Like, wow, what's life going to be like with this? Just choose it. Just know that it's done. That's it. Feel it for a moment. Just so that allow yourself to be that. And as you choose that you are good enough or that you are worthy or that you've got enough time or whatever it is. I want you to start growing yourself older again. That's it. But only grow older as long as you can keep this belief with you. What you'll notice, it's like, a, it's like a torch going through the darkness. Wherever it goes, it dissolves any darkness that's there, this new feeling as you grow older. And so start to grow yourself older. You might have seen something or you may have seen nothing. That's it. And as you grow older, just keep growing yourself older and go only as fast as you can stop and notice 
events changing themselves. Now the events might be the same and look the same, but notice if you can, I'm sure you could notice that they are they're different because you're different. And that's it. However fast you need to go, walk yourself into your future. But first, walk yourself through your past into the present moment. And notice the difference. Notice the difference. And wherever you are, I just want you to press fast forward and zip yourself through to the present moment, keeping your eyes closed, noticing how it felt as you turn and look back, how the color has changed when you think about your past. Keeping your eyes closed. Can you feel that shift already? Whether you can or you can't, I want you to lock it in by taking a step in your mind, metaphorically forward into your future, and only step in the direction where this energy takes you as it's moving you towards where you want to manifest, where you want to grow, stepping forward, knowing you're the seed of the future. How does that feel? Lock in that feeling. And open your eyes, come back to me. <laughs> Always, Helen. Always. How was that, guys? How was that? As one of my old coaches would say, how does that old problem you used to have feel now? Good, Stuart, beautiful. Happy. Good job, Nicole. Hmm. Lighter. My true being is infinite wisdom and I choose to create from that place magic. Colorful. Nice. From being neglected to completely supported. Well done, Stuart. Dude, what a change. Bright and happy. Beautiful. Beautiful. From blocked to powerful. And you are very excellent. Thank you, Chris. Literally had the feeling of being kicked forward. Beautiful. A lot of times when you arrive at your future, you realize who was calling you forward the whole time. I had this experience. I was walking along the beach about three months ago now, I'd say, maybe four. And I had this moment where tears started coming out of my eyes because, uh, of course, that's where tears come out of. <laughs> but they did. And, and, I was, and I was standing on the beach and I just, and I was feeling so grateful for living in paradise, married to this amazing woman with this beautiful business and house and family and life. Just going, man, I'm so grateful. And I, and I realized, I realized who was calling me forward in all of my meditations because it was me just in a different time space. It was really cool. It's cool. And I just remember going, oh, yes, because <laughs> I was standing in it. That's who was calling me forward every meditation, every morning. It wasn't the present me calling. I was tuning into who I was becoming and having them tell me how to make it come to be. It was this beautiful experience. And uh, just remember that it's your future self that's calling you forward. <laughs> 